Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the 2023 WAS Physics Practical. Today, my focus will be on the mechanics aspects of the WAS experiment. And my goal today is to, ex is to explain some of the possible questions that you'll see on the day of the exam. So let's start off with the apparatus that uh, WAEC asked schools to provide. So here they are. You'll be asked to provide a load of bars of uh, 100 gram. It's concealed and it's labeled P. Then you've got another mass of 20 gram concealed and labeled Q. And you have a set of masses. You have a metal rule, 100 cm piece of string, stopwatch, helical spring, retort stand setup, and knife edge. So the first question in your mind is what will be the nature of the structure of this experiment? Well, as it turns out, WAEC is trying to make room for possible form of experiments. So what this means is all of this exper all of these apparatus will not be used for a single experiment. You will be given an experiment that will use a subset of these instruments. So my goal here is to tell you some of the potential experiments that could come out from this particular uh, specimen. One thing I'm sure of is all of the specimen will likely not go into a single experiment. This is just to provide a kind of room for, for you to have to prepare for various kind of uh, potential experiment. So let's take a look at uh, some of the experiment that could potentially come from this setup. So specifically, I'm going to talk about three types that I strongly feel that you should see one of it, you understand? So one of what I'm going to discuss will be what you should potentially see on the day of the exam. So let's start off with the first experimental setup. Let's take a look at this first possible scenario. In this particular experimental setup, the goal is to apply the principle of moment to determine one of the unknown masses, either P or Q or both, right? So in this case, I'm going to show you how this experiment can lead to that. So let me try to show the principle behind this experiment. In this particular instance, I'm going to assume M1 to be equal to Q and M2 to be equal to P. We know that this will be concealed and the value is 20 gram. And we know this is 100 gram, right? So the principle of moment states that the, the sum of the clockwise moment should be equal to the sum of the anticlockwise moment. So what are the sum of the clockwise moment? What are the moments that tend to move this metal in a clockwise direction? And that is this M2 times G, which is the force. So what that means is we know that moment is the force times the distance from the pivot point. So in this case, we are going to be talking about the F2 and the D2, right? So the way this experiment is run is you hang M1 on one side of the metal rule. That is, you move this M1 by distance P1. Then you measure P, uh, D1. So D1 is the difference between uh, the, the distance between this pivot point and zero. This is zero point, this pivot point. So when you subtract P1 from the distance of this pivot point, you get D1. Then D, then once you set your M1, you adjust M2 until you get to equilibrium where the metal is stable, horizontally stable. At that point, you measure D2, that is distance between this M1 point and the pivot point. So basically, what you're doing is to take your reading in this fashion. You have P1, then you adjust the second mass until you get P2. Then you determine D1, you determine D2. So D1 and D2, that the distance between the two masses from the pivot point. Then the pivot point is not at the center of gravity. The pivot point is a little bit away from the center of gravity. So which means the mass of the metal is also acting on the metal. 
So in that case, the distance between the pivot point and the center of gravity is d naught. So that distance is uh, that the, the the force of gravity along the cent the center of the metal rule is going to be de uh, denoted as f naught, right? So basically, there are three forces act acting on this metal rule. We have f one, we have f two, and we have f naught. F1 is acting in such a way as to rotate the metal rule in an anticlockwise direction. So this F1 is anticlockwise, then F2 is clockwise, this is anticlockwise, this is clockwise, then the F0 is also anticlockwise, that is it tends to rotate the metal rule in an anticlockwise direction. So this is these are the forces acting. So now let's connect all of this together. So the sum of the clockwise uh, moments, we just have just one clockwise moment. So in that case, it's just M2G, that is the force, the mass times acceleration of the gravity times D2 is equal to M1G D1 plus M0G, then we have D0. G is common, so we can cancel out the G's, and we're going to be left with M2 D2 equals M1 D1 plus M0 D0. M2 D2, which is equal to M1 D1 plus M0 D0. Here, we can clearly see that we can divide both all through by M2. So that will leave us with D2 equals M1 over M2. D1 plus M0 D0 then over M2. So now we can easily plot a graph of D2 on the y axis and D1 on the x axis. And the slope is going to be a positive slope, something like this. We are going to get something of this nature where the slope, which is the change in D2 divided by change in D1 which is a slope change in D2 over change in D1 will be equal to M1 over M2. So this is the slope here, and this is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is the whole of this, which is M0 D0 divided by M2. All of this, are, they are all constant because the, the knife edge is going to be fixed at D0, M0 is the mass of the metal rule, and M2 is the is one of the concealed mass, which we know to be P, and which is 100, right? So if you know the mass of the metal rule, and of course you know where you position the, the knife edge, you can easily compute the, the uh, the value of C in case you don't want to go through the entire experiment. But then, let's say you know the value of C from the graph. You can easily calculate the value of M2 as follows. So this is C times, this is C. This is M0, D0 divided by C. So that's the value of M2. Then see the slope. You can calculate the value of M1 if you know M2 as follows. S times M2. So this is basically how we can determine the mass of one of um, one of the unknown, or you can just use the slope to calculate the ratio. So you should expect your slope to be something like 20 over 100, which should be 0 0.2. So that should be the slope if this is the nature of the experiment uh, given to you. So this is just a possible structure of the experiment. So there's another possible experiment that you may come across. So let's take a look at that one. This is the second possible experimental setup you could be given. So in this particular experiment, no need of meter rule, no need of knife edge. So this experimental setup is based on the principle the oscillation, oscillation of a mass basically. So you'll be asked to use the helical spring, some masses, the rate of stand and your stopwatch. So I'm going to show you how this experiment is actually being performed using 
the Mavinon physics lab. So here is how the, the, experiment, the experiment goes. You'll be asked to set a particular weight, to hang a particular weight. So let's say this time around, you, you are asked to set the, the, the weight to be, let's say 60, for instance, 60 um, gram, right? Then you'll be asked to oscillate the mass. So oscillate means what you do is you, you stretch it by some distance, then you release it and allow it to vibrate. So you allow it to vibrate for, let's say, 20 oscillations, right? An oscillation is a complete to and fro movement. That's a complete oscillation. So in this case, you you look, you look, check the number of seconds that must have elapsed after 20 uh, oscillations or 10 oscillations. And once you got that, you stop, you click on stop. And once you click on stop, you can then check the time using your stopwatch to see how many seconds that elapsed after 20 oscillation. And once you have that, you record that particular time. So once you've gone through that, then the next thing is you increase the mass again, let's say to 80, maybe you add another gram, some grams to get up to 80. Then you repeat the oscillation process again for let's say 20 oscillations. You check the time that elapsed after 20 oscillation and you record. So this is basically how this experiment goes. So yes, how your reading could potentially go, where you have your masses, 1500 and so on, then you have the uh, the time, the time taken for let's say 20 oscillation, then this is the period. The period is the time divided by the number of oscillations. So if, you're, if your oscillation is 20, you divide the time by 20. Then T square is the square of the period, right? So that is, this is the structure of the table of reading. So that this is just how this particular experiment goes and it's quite straightforward. So now let me just talk about the principle behind this experiment in nature of the equation governing this experiment. So let's take a look. Let me discuss the equation governing this, this particular experiment. The relationship between period and the mass hanging on this spring is as follows. The period is proportional to the square root of the mass, right? But then if you want to write the full equation, the full equation is t equals 2 pi square root of the mass divided by k, where k is the stiffness of the spring, also known as the force constant. So let's try to find the governing equation as follows. So we can, if you square both sides, we're going to get 4 pi squared times m over k. So if you look at this, the period square then is directly proportional to the mass in this particular case. Where, so if you're going to plot your graph such that you have this and you have m on the, on this axis, it means there is no y intercept so the graph is going to start from zero and the slope will be four pi square over k that will be the slope so if this is what you expect to do then you should expect your slope to be as follows and you can use the slope to compute the force constant so the goal of this experiment might be to ask you to calculate the force constant of the spring that's one possible uh, I think so. The, the first constant will actually be four pi square over the slope. So this is one possible way the experiment are set up to be. So there's another thought, thought, another thought possibility, which is a slight modification of this. So let's take a look at that. That possibility also has this setup, but it incorporates the unknown mass, right? So let's say in this case, they just want to use mass Q, for instance. So let's say mass Q is 20 gram, right? So in this case, we know that the relationship between the period and the mass is as follows, which is uh, two, which is four pi square M over K. What if the mass is divided into two parts where Instead of you just having, so let's review the table of reading. So in the previous table of reading, we just have 
M. What if there is an M naught, which is like a fixed mass before you add more masses? So let's say at the initial phase, you just have the Q, that's just 20 grams. And uh, here you have the additional mass. So let's call this M1. So let's say the M1 is like uh, what you change, basically, those various set of masses. So let's say you have 20, 40, 60, it's just for, for example, whereas this one is constant. This, this is like the initial mass that you hang, right? Before you keep adding more masses. So in that case, you're going to get something like M, which is the sum of these two. So M basically is M0 plus M1. So you vary M1 and you fix M0. So M0 could be your Q or your P, right? So in this case, your mass will then be divided into two parts where you have T uh, squared. Uh, as a funk uh, equal to this, where the m is now m1 plus m0. So with this kind of setup, you are going to have a, an intercept because in this case, you are going to have something like this. If you expand, you're going to have 4 pi square over k m1 plus 4 pi square over k m m0. So in this particular scenario, the slope is still the same, but now you have the intercept to be 4 pi square m0 over k. So with this, you can actually calculate the value of this m0. How? If you know the slope, because this this is the slope, right? This constitutes the slope. It means C is the slope times M0. And M0 is simply the y-intercept divided by the slope. So this could just be a way to guide you in computing the value of Q or the value of P. So this is just a, a kind of slight modification to how this experiment could be structured. Well, anyways, these are the two main possible experiments you're expecting. It's either you have the meter rule experiment which is based on the principle of moment or you have this uh, oscillating uh, spring which is based on principles around os uh, uh, oscillation and vibrational motion now let's take a look at the precautions for this particular experiment so for for the oscillatory motion experiments here are the precautions you should take note of ensure the load, the load is gently pulled downwards by a small displacement then Zero error of stopwatch should be noted and taken into account. Then make sure that you avoid error to parallax when reading stopwatch and ensure there is no drought during the oscillation of the mast. So these are the experiments you expect under the next session of the 2023 YFIS practical. Then watch out for the next video on, on optics and electricity.